Are you frustrated that you cannot use the cursor and articulate storyline more than once in one slide? Or that it never disappears from the screen? You want it to leave the screen eventually? Well, I'm going to show you how you can use a cursor to animate something or animate your course. Before we jump into it, my name is Kat Sabolo from The Stella Way, and I'm here to help you design, create, and launch online courses. Each week there's a new video here on our YouTube channel, so don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button. So let's take a look at how you can use the cursor and articulate storyline in a different way. This shows you an example of a slide where we're using the mouse to show particular areas on a screen and you can see that there's animation move in the mouse and there is also a little click or a little flash. Now this is really useful when we want to show multiple mouse or mice on a screen at the same time. You can see that it's moving through it and it's doing this all by itself which is why it's also really useful that you do have that track changes or not track changes but this tracking down the bottom the seeking because if i've missed something i can easily go back as the student and continue from there so it's a way to get around that uh, challenge of if we're animating something what happens if a student misses that animation so that seeking down the bottom is really useful all right so now that we've seen that example let's go in and have a look at how we've created that. I'm just going to show you one that I'm working on right now. There's multiple of these throughout the entire project. And what I wanted to demonstrate to you was this one here, particularly one that hasn't been set up uh, or hasn't been updated so we can do it together. So first of all, what I have done is simply gone in to an icon and I've inserted this mouse icon, which is a cursor icon. Um, don't type in mouse or it comes up with an actual either mouse or it comes up with the physical mouse itself. We don't want a mouse, we want the cursor. Lesson learned. Okay, so in this, there is a group. Like most icons, you have these freeform images, which sometimes really frustrate me, but this time was really useful because I actually wanted them to be separate images. And what I was able to do was separate the actual icon here. So if we look at this one here, this cursor icon, you can see that I have the freeform one, which is the black icon. And then we have below that, this here, which should actually be smaller. Let's do that now. And that's the little yellow icon. And what that means is that this little yellow here that you can see, let me scroll in, this little yellow circle or halo you can see flashes for just one second. And that just helps us with a little bit more interactivity to show that something's being clicked. And as you can see, I've layered these up. Each of these is a group. So I have the freeform mouse that moves. I then have the click that happens just before the text comes up while the orange also animates. So what that means is that the mouse would come or the cursor will come and hover here. Then this yellow would flash at the same time that this orange appears. And that kind of creates an illusion that someone is clicking on that total assets to highlight this section and show the text. Okay, so you can see that I've layered them up and I've put them for some time. And each one also has a animation that is the motion path animation. So if we click on this motion path animation, you can also see that if I just zoom out a little bit here, you would be able to see that there are motion paths on each of these cursors. So what I have done with the motion paths is again, this gives an illusion that something's moving throughout the screen. And so for each of these activities, I have had the first mouse that's come in from the right or the left. So if I scroll that a little bit more, you can see that this starts here and swoops in and then it clicks. It shows for a couple of seconds and then it goes down to this next one here. Now this is not one mouse or one cursor with different directions. It is in fact three different cursors. And so to do this, what I've simply done is for each motion path, I've laid it exactly on top of the next one. So when we click on that motion path, everything else kind of grades out. And if I zoom in, we can see 
that we have this motion path here and this motion path is this darker gray here which is the start of the motion path which brings us down to this light gray which is the end of the motion path and we can see that this doesn't end where I actually have the cursor so we want to overlay them with each other so I simply just click on the red and then overlay them so now we've got my end path which is overlapping now I want my start to also overlap with the earlier cursor so again, I'm just going to click on this green and then drag it down so it sits right on top. Okay. And what you have also seen is that the motion path has compressed. To make it smaller, I need to click on one of these uh, icons here and I can make it smaller, but because it's already so small, I cannot really indent it any further here. What I can do, however, is make it a straight line. So I simply just hover over this until I've got this little um, white arrow, this two sided arrow, and I'm just going to drag it to about here. And when I do so, we would see that this line, the motion path then updates to be this line like this. So let's have a look at what this looks like. So you can see that we come in from the right and there's an ever so uh, slight click, which I've noticed as well that we don't want the cursor to hover over the number. And then you can see that it moves down that last motion path that we did as well was perfect. So to update everything, it's easy, very easy for us to be able to come into this top one here, which we noticed was ever so slightly layering over the top of the number. See how here the cursor that I actually have isn't layering over the number. But if I click on this little uh, red one here, this motion path for the first one, see how it's over the number there? So I just need to make sure I realign that with where I actually want it to be. There. So. Again, at this point, I just like to make sure that everything else is aligned as well. The last thing I want to do is change something and then it affects something else. And we can see everything's aligned. So let's have a look at what that looks like now. Perfect, that's much better. And see how that little yellow click is just for a split second right before the text appears just to have the illusion that someone's actually clicking it through. So while we're not using the cursor per se, we are still using a cursor to be able to effectively navigate through the screen or create animations or illustrate to the student that they have to click somewhere or someone is clicking somewhere. So if that's been useful to you, subscribe below, add a comment and let us know what other course creation videos you would like to see. Until next time, happy course creating!